Right, here's a practical lesson looking at standing waves on a string. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a, a frequency generator that's going to cause a vibration at this end. It's then going to be attached to a piece of string that goes over a roller and then attached to a weight. When this um, vibrates up and down, we're looking for this shape that's created in the way, the fundamental frequency. And what we're looking at is we're looking at how the length between the two supports changes compared to how the frequency um, of this signal generation, signal generator varies. Um, and of course we have weight here which has an effect as well. So in essence they're all brought together in, a, in a, an equation that talks about the speed of a wave is the square root of the tension over the mass per unit length. The tension of course that we have here is provided by the weight which is mg divided by the mass unit length. This is a description of the actual um, wire, rope, whatever substance you have here vibrating, the mass per unit length. And I think that's probably what we're trying to achieve in all of this. We're trying to look at the mass per unit length. We also know from pretty uh, basic physics that uh, wave mechanics says that this is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So suddenly we have this equation that looks something like that. And finally, how do we relate that to the length? Well, we're looking for this fundamental frequency, which in actual fact is, demonstrates half a wavelength on this string. So therefore, L is equal to lambda over 2. So therefore, in other words, lambda is 2L. So I could write this as frequency times 2L is equal to the square root of mg over mu. Good. Now, what are we looking to investigate? There are two experiments that we can run with this one. In experiment one, we can look at how the frequency and the length change and how they interdepend. Or experiment two, we could look at how the mass and the frequency change for a fixed length. So in experiment one, what we'd like to change is we would like to change the length so we look at the length in meters, and then what we're going to look at is the frequency required in order to create that standing wave. Because as we increase the free, as we decrease the length, we'll have to change the frequency. And I'll show you how that is in, with the equipment in a minute. Once, twice, an average, and then you can see here that the frequency and the length are inversely proportional to one another. So what we're going to look for is one over the frequency, obviously in hertz. So one over hertz is one over second, one over one over seconds, which gives us seconds. That's the first experiment that we're looking at. Experiment number one. Change the length, look at the frequency, and then plot one over the frequency against the length. Okay, but experiment two, we can actually change the mass here with a fixed length and look at the frequency. A bit harder to work out, but... Let's show you the um, <clears throat> table of results we'll need for that. What we'd have is, we'd have the mass, so experiment two, try to keep that all in shot. We'd be looking for, We'd be looking for the mass, which is our independent variable which we're changing. We'd look at the frequency, of course in hertz, once, twice an average, like we did before. And then finally, we'd be looking at the frequency squared in hertz squared. And I'll show you why in a minute. Because where f and l are inversely proportional, so if I'm looking for l, 
as my independent variable and f is my I could write this as L equals a half root mg over mu by 1 over f. So I could plot L against 1 over f. L is what I measured. So put it down there. 1 over f, sorry, L is what I've changed. 1 over f is what I've measured. And I come out with a gradient. Well, the gradient equals this. Whereas with this second experiment that I've done, I can say that f is equal, is equal to, well, no, let's do this again. Let's square this entire function here. So f 4f squared l squared gives me mg over mu. I'm changing my mass. I'm looking at, so f squared is equal to, I'm bringing down the 4 and bringing down the l squared, g over 4l squared by m. So if I were to plot changing mass f squared, actually a straight line where my gradient is g over 4l squared. So there's the theory. And let's see the actual experiment. Okay, here is the experiment. I have my um, oscillator here that's going to vibrate up and down. This is going to control the frequency at which this moves up and down. And then I have at this end a bridge to determine the length of the <clears throat> rope that's vibrating. I'm trying to bring back in line here the diagram of what I had. There is the diagram itself. The weight is suspended. I don't know if you can see right over there at the far end. And it's 100 grams that I've suspended. And simply, when I turn this on, this is starting to vibrate. And we can just see here, potentially, hopefully you can see here, the vibrations. And I'll change the frequency. You can see it goes to different types of vibrations are present. We're looking for the fundamental frequency. So if I turn that down, you can see there, that's it. It also starts to resonate when it hits the fundamental frequency. Something's happening at the far end, but we're just interested in that bridge. So, <clears throat> I'm going to place my meter ruler there in between the bridge and the signal generator. And I'm looking for one meter. And then I'll change this until I get, there you go, that resonance there. Okay, so we're going to then vary the position of either this different positions which then requires a change in frequency in order to hit that fundamental frequency. I don't know whether you can see here the signal generator. Let's see if I can zoom in on that so you can see it. It essentially has this coarse grain here which tells us whether you're in tens, hundreds or just units. This is tens and then we have um, this, which tells us whether we're between 1 and 11 on that coarse grain. So it's quite an easy one to read. And I'd suggest you move all the way along, changing as you go, then reset all the way along and repeat and see how that goes. Now, the second experiment requires <clears throat> a fixed length. I chose roughly about 60 centimetres but then requiring you to change the mass at the far end. I've got some masses up there. As you can see, let's move that a little bit closer. <clears throat> at the far end. <clears throat> and once again, apply another one, tune the frequency, and see when you hit this fundamental frequency. Okay, let me get some results. Okay, here are the results for the length and the frequency. And I took one over the frequency 
and um, I'll give you an opportunity to copy those down. Remember, what I'm achieving, what I'm hoping to achieve from this is looking at how 1 over f against the length and my gradient will be equal to that. If you want to hit pause here and copy that down again, remind yourself of it, that's what happens. But there are your results that will hopefully prove that. Similarly, <clears throat> these are the ones with mass. I'm looking at mass, frequency, and then frequency squared. Why am I looking at frequency squared? Because for this reason, that if we take the original expression, which was h f times 2 l is the square root of mu like that, it leads us to here f squared is, therefore I've plotted f squared against m, I would get that. And therefore, that's what I was looking for with set results. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I hope the gradients come out to find you the mass per unit length.